Today's session obviously is based around split testing. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the use cases around using split testing. And then I'm going to show you some of the configuration and what styles of campaigns that they can be utilized with. We're going to look at some of the setup of the split testing functionality. And again, I'm going to give you some best practice and some tips around using split testers, split testing directly within the GetML application and the specific campaigns. So if I move through to Gator Mail, so see we log into SSO, I go directly into the Gator Mail platform, and of course, split testing is coupled up with email marketing campaigns specifically. people on mute there so specifically within gate mail campaigns so obviously the ability of split testing is what it gives us the the ability to do is actually take our existing audience group against the actual campaign itself and we can split test that into either a percentage or an actual figure so if we go into a brand new campaign I'll show you on a brand new campaign within gate mail this can you this can be used for really traditional campaigns only so you don't have the functionality of utilizing this tool within a quick campaign. It doesn't support split testing. The other thing to be mentioned is when it comes to building campaigns, the campaign style that we can use, the campaign type that we can use is anything from a static campaign, a refreshed non-reoccurring campaign, but they can't be used for things like workflow-based campaigns. So you can't split test within a workflow utilizing it under one single campaign you can take down you can take people down different paths and different journeys to kind of get the same feel but i can't actually do split testing on a specific campaign um, within the actual workflow itself so hopefully that's clear so if i just call this split testing and again it's Irrelevant if you're integrated to CRM or if you're direct to Communicator, you can use this for, for any campaign uh, as long as it's a traditional campaign. So moving directly through to the email tab, because of course this is all around the actual email creative, the email creative and the subject line itself. So moving through to the email tab, I should imagine most of you are just sending out emails on a daily basis. It could be anything from static to perhaps refresh, non-reoccurring, perhaps you're using a bit of perhaps uh, follow-ups and, and workflow styles of campaigns as well. Um, but ordinarily the standard type is selected. So we don't have to think about it. We'll either build an email directly from within the campaign tab, or we're going to grab an existing campaign that we've already got to our disposal. So it's one that we quite often overlook, but split testing is a really, useful tool because it can give us that sort of beta test before we actually launch the campaign to the entire audience so by selecting split test this now opens up the advanced options for for the split test tool and we've got basically a couple of parameters here so we've got things to think about in terms of the send method we've got the timings to consider we've got the criteria to consider and we've also got the sample size Additionally to that, that's really the configuration, but now we need to start thinking about what's the content. We've got basically the ability to have an Outlook style email versus an HTML style email, for example. We could pitch it up against the from address of the actual email that's actually sent, and we can also pitch it up against the subject line as well. So we'll come back to that in just a moment, but if we start off with the send method, we always highly recommend the manual send method to these. And the reasoning behind that is automation is great in lots of guises and we'd you know, definitely recommend it in terms of workflows and follow-ups and other types of automations. But this is one area that I think it really needs that personal touch. It needs that, that care and uh, basically thought process in terms of who do we send to next. So what I mean by that is if I do a manual send, it is more manual. It doesn't take a lot of effort to be fair, but it is more manual. I will have to click on initiate of the campaign as normal. 
And once I get to that point, I can then evaluate the results of what the split test is actually bringing in. So it'll compare design one against com essentially design two, and it'll bring in all sorts of information, things like the total sent, the total delivered, and then it's going to take into account, well, if it's total delivered, then I want to look at the bounces and the unsubscribed data. Then it gets to the juicy stats, stuff like the, obviously, opens and clicks. Well, opens, I'm not too fussed about because we, we really have to take with that with a pinch of salt on the basis that we're basing on, obviously, the download of that transparent pixel image. So I'm going to disregard that from the evaluation of a split test. But I would look at things like the click-through rates. So I can on auto send base it on the click-through rate. So why, why wouldn't I do an auto send with click-through? And the simple answer to that is, is you're being blindfolded by all of the results that we're actually collecting and, and allowing you to potentially analyze if you set it to manual. So auto send is literally black and white. It's saying, if you set it to auto send over one hour and one day or one day, one hour, I can then evaluate design basically one versus design two in terms of which ones had the best click-through rate. But it hasn't, and it hasn't been asked to take into account whether actually I had a much smaller percentage of people actually being sent design two, which is why design one ended up being the winning design. So if the vast majority, if not all of the audience members had hit a bounce or an unsubscribe on design two, I actually had nobody left to send to. So it's an un unfair, unweighted test. And of course, design one is gonna win hands down. I don't get to see that if I do it on auto send, just on the click-through rate. So again, manual is definitely the way forward, and I promise you it really doesn't take much more effort. So we'll do it based upon manual. And then in terms of sample size, you can do an actual uh, percent, sorry, an actual figure or percentage. I'm not really fussed which way um, I tend to use that, to be fair, I normally use percentage. The equations work out near on the same. And then in terms of the content, we've got design one versus design two. So as I said, I could do an Outlook style email versus an HTML email. So maybe there's a bit of a, a heated debate of which email should be sent out. Well, let's put it to the test. Let's see the metrics and the results actually tell us which one is the correct design to actually send. So we can go and select an Outlook style, or we can go and select an HTML style. And then in this particular case, one of our tips would be, you can only measure one thing at once. So therefore, keep the subject lines the same, keep the aliases the same, and then you know when you're actually measuring the results of this specific split test that you know that you're just purely looking on the basis of the email design. Now you can flip that. So you can say, well, actually, we've tested over the last five campaigns on split testing, HTML versus Outlook, and Outlook seems to be coming up trumps. So let's now move the testing on. Let's now go and test another, essentially, subject matter, as it were. No pun intended, I promise. But now we could say, okay, well, let's let's bring in some personalization onto design one versus design two. That's our next metric to start measuring. Also, things that we've tested from our own marketing department is purposeful sort of spelling mistakes. Um, so, so some of you might have been to our conferences. Um, and over the last couple of years, we've been running what we've been referring to as the Great Spliff Test. So what we've done is we've purposely put a spelling mistake, a comical spelling mistake, into the actual subject line of the email versus the correct spelling. And the results have actually shown us that the actual spelling mistake actually wins hands down, funny enough, because people are too ready to obviously critique, no doubt, in terms of the spelling of these subject lines that we've been sending. So spelling mistakes, not that I'd perhaps be brave enough to do all my campaigns like that. They do and have been shown from our results that we've been testing do actually um, show a better click-through percentage is what we'll be measuring in those uh, particular um, split test campaigns have, have definitely worked. So actually mistakes in general do tend to work within the subject lines. Again, I'm not condoning it, but again, our, our metrics and evidence have shown us better, better results activity based upon the mistakes in the subject line. Other things that we've tested along the line is we've also looked at things like emojis within side of, side of subject lines. If I'm absolutely honest, my personal opinion is I'm not a massive fan of emojis within a subject line, but I have to concede to the fact that looking at our results, looking at the measurements, then again, 
uh, for us and our, our targeted audience, obviously we have to bear this in mind, very specific testing to specific audience, uh, essentially profiles, etc. For us, that actually worked better by putting emojis in there by not actually having them. Again, I have to be led by the results opposed to personal opinions, of course, in these in these scenarios. So again, best practice would be testing one thing at a time, trying perhaps not necessarily spelling mistakes, but things that are different to your normal day to day, things that will will provoke some form of response, whether that is a negative in terms of a drop drop off in terms of clicks and that average of open, of course. Um, or whether it's actually a positive uplift in terms of obviously the activity that you're going to get from it. Again, manual method is definitely the recommended uh, route forward. And again, the whole point of split testing, just as another recommendation, is that the percentage should be you know, fairly low, 10%, 20%, something of that ilk. I don't want to start doing large numbers because, of course, if I do sort of 50%, I haven't got many people left to actually send to. So it needs to be a small sample audience so I can reap the benefit of actually engaging to my audience with hopefully what was the, the winning, the winning essentially uh, chemistry that I'd actually tested prior to that final send. So that's a little bit of best practice and a, a little bit of our own findings from what we've been doing personally uh, from testing our, our own software with our own client base um, using those different techniques. Additionally to that is once I'm in a position to actually initiate my split test, what I'll be able to do is just say save and initiate, and it initiates the first phase, it initiates the split test itself. Of course, it doesn't send to everybody at this stage. So if I close out of this particular campaign, she's complaining I've not filled in the details, which is fair enough. So if I close out of this particular campaign, I've got some campaigns that I've, I've used for split testing uh, examples in the past. Now the results aren't going to rock the world, to be fair, because there's minimal contacts in it. We've just purely been doing it for demonstration purposes. But if I go into one of these campaigns and click through to basically results, if this was one that I'd initiated, it just shows me the results of the split test only. Because remember, we've not got past that that first phase, we've just initiated the split test, we need to make a formulated decision of which one we're actually going to send. So by going through to the results of this particular one, this has gone past the point of making that decision, and I can show you from the split test tab, if I just, just scroll slightly further up, I mean that really is what you see when you arrive at that first phase. So when I've hit initiate, view split test results, this is what I'm seeing. So it, at this stage, these, these initiate buttons would actually, of course, be lit green because I'm now making an informed decision of which, which basically um, version of the subject line or which version of the design I'm going to commit and go with. Now, this obviously tab here is obviously post-initiation in, in general, if that makes sense. So I've, I've initiated the campaign, I've chosen my split test, and it said you went with split test design number, basically one slash A. So it's obviously got a green to tick, green tick to tell me which one I've actually obviously committed with and gone with. And it also shows me the one that I've not chosen to go with, but it also shows me the stats. So whether you're looking at this post initiation or whether you're looking at this screen because you're trying to formulate the decision of which one you should go with. These are the stats, these are the juicy stats of saying of why I'd want to go manual opposed to auto. So on the manual method, I've got to the screen, I've got to make a decision. So I no longer just have to look at the fact that I've got a total, you know, clicks of seven, pitches against zero in this particular case, I can now look at all the metrics, all the statistics that will help me formulate that decision of which one is the better design. This one is pretty clear cut because it was just sent to, to one person and for design one and one person for design essentially two. Um, and there's no further clicks really, there's not much else going on here to be fair. But in another scenario, it may be again that, you know, we've got equal proportions of it being sent to, we've got 
relatively low clicks on design B, but we can actually see when we look at things like the unsubscribes and perhaps the bounces, that that's the reasoning behind it. And now it's back to the human to make that, that decision and evaluate the data that we're actually presented with. So this is why it's absolutely key to do a manual send. And another thing that I think about sometimes when I do split testing is sometimes I've got a bit of a gut feel about which one I think is going to be better, but it, it's still worth me doing the split test regardless. And if I looked at these results, and they were near on level pegging, but the actual, the actual um, winning design was only perhaps winning by a single click. And I've evaluated it for at least 24 hours. So now I'm, I'm in the sort of mode that I want to crack on and I want to get this sent out to the majority of, of the remaining audience. I might say, well, actually design B was the one that was my gut feel. It's only a click after all. So maybe I might still actually go with the losing design because my gut is telling me that it's a click and I still think that design B is actually going to essentially um, be better in terms of the results that I'm going to get as an overall. So that's basically split testing. Once obviously I've initiated design A or design B, it then will when it will then send to my remaining audience. So again, if I've got a thousand people and I've done my 10%, it's going to send in terms of the split testing, 50 contacts design B, 50 contacts design essentially A, and then it'll send to the other 900 remaining contacts. And they will obviously then formulate um, the remaining of the results that I get into the campaign. So in terms of obviously the clicks, the overviews, that all piles back into the into the general overview and statistics that I get into the main results of the campaign. So just a quick recap on the main thing. So split testing can only be done with traditional campaigns. You can't use them on quick campaigns. You can't use them on campaigns that have basically follow up slash workflow enabled. You can use them on static campaigns and refresh, re, refresh non-reoccurring campaigns are typical examples of those. In terms of which split um, test should you go for, whether that should be auto or manual, generally speaking, we say manual all day long. Only test one variable at a time, so test your subject line first or test your creative first, but choose one metric um, to start with. And again, you have the ability of obviously adapting either an Outlook versus HTML or maybe even two HTML designs, but one's got more images, one's got less images. Um, obviously, play around on a separate test with obviously subject lines, personalization versus non-personalization. Uh, another good one is a company name versus an account manager's name uh, is another good example for that. Uh, potentially try, play around with uh, emojis if you think that's relevant for, for your business sector, as it were. Um, and again, if you're brave enough, you could play around with perhaps mistakes in the subject lines themselves. So that's the split testing um, basically tool within obviously Gator Mail. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, um, then obviously please do let me know. I'll hang around for the next five minutes or so and just field out those questions for you. But otherwise, thank you very much for your time. Okay, so I'm just going to share some of these questions that are coming in, some good questions coming in. So does a split test campaign temporarily suspend um, when it hits 10%? Um, yes, I mean, that that is the percentage of the entire audience it's going to send to. So it'll hit 10% and they go, right, that's it. I'm, I'm pausing until you release the queue. And releasing the queue is you making that informed decision if you're going to basically initiate design one or two. It won't release beyond that. If you never initiate again bearing in mind i'm talking about manual if you never initiate past a uh, sorry design one or two 
um, then the, the campaign is simply going to be sat in limbo uh, forevermore until you make that informed decision of which design to go with. So it is down to your commitment to decide which design is going to be the winning design and then it releases the queue and it will send to the other 90%, again, using that example, of course, of, of 10%. So when it pauses, is there a notice? So this is just following on from, from Greg's, Greg's question here. So when it pauses, is there a notice uh, sent alerting you? Um, no, there's not, to be fair. I mean, to be honest with you, you'll see all of that happen pretty quickly because you know, dependent on your audience size, the, the way that we get campaign uh, campaign audiences out the door is pretty damn quick. It's something around about a thousand emails per second. Um, so it, it's going to be all over fairly quickly on on that sort of 10% figure. Um, but obviously, if you're sending to a million, uh, a couple of million contacts, and also depending if you've got things like dynamic content uh, in the emails and the sender aliases, etc., those could have factors to slowing it down slightly. Uh, but generally speaking, those emails will be sent out pretty quickly. So just by you popping back in, say, I don't know, maybe five, 10 minutes of initiating the campaign, um, you'll probably see it at that 10% and, and paused and ready to go. But again, if you do it manual, you'll want to periodically pop back, I'd say probably every sort of um, hour or so. And if you get to the point after checking, you know, after three hours and there's still not a lot happening, then I'd probably leave it, leave it to the next day. But again, all dependent on factors of what time did I start off the split test versus when should I check it next. Can you split test different campaign landing zone pages? Um, yeah, technically you can to be fair. So what, what you could do is you could attach a landing zone page. So I'm thinking my feet a little bit here because I haven't done that myself, but I don't see why we can't. You could attach a landing zone page um, with a different, two different designs. Yeah, so you could attach basically a landing zone page with a different reference number to design one versus design two. You'd still have to have two separate emails technically, um, but you, you should be able to do that. Okay, so another question from Greg. So, can split testing be using Gator workflow using uh, data sync with CRM? And it's cut the question off, so bear with me two seconds. There we go. So, as long as the email slash refresh non recurring are selected. Um, I think the answer is, is no. To be fair, you you can't you can't do split testing with inside of uh, with inside of workflow full stop. So it, it does have to be just standard campaigns and workflows. Speaking, your your type your campaign type should be set as a follow up slash workflow campaign. And the reason behind that is it removes the audience tab. So that's really important, that being said. Okay, so that's all the questions that I've got here at the minute. I'll, I'll stick around for another couple of minutes if anybody thinks of anything. But obviously we will be sending out the uh, the video for the actual webinar um, as well. And obviously any, any other questions that you might have outside of this, then we're more than happy to to obviously follow up with yourselves. But otherwise, again, thank you very much, and we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next webinar.